Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I am playing through Marvel United Multiverse with the new solo mode. And if your first response is, these aren't Marvel United Multiverse, you're not wrong, but I don't have a box for those. So uh, we're going to use the X-Men box and the regular core game box just to show you I have Marvel United and all that stuff. But we're going to be diving into the new solo mode of Marvel United. I'm going to be talking to you about those changes. There's going to be a link down below to the Kickstarter. You can check that out. As well as I have a full gameplay of Marvel United Multiverse already. I'll be talking about the changes, the updates, all the various things that you need to know about this particular scenario over here. As well as uh, I'll have a review of Marvel United Multiverse and a uh, gameplay of Infinity Wars is going up. A gameplay of um, Sinister Six is going up. Basically, there's another Marvel United Kickstarter. I like that game. It's how I got started in content creation, by the way. That was my, my first video that was well, not how I got started, but that was like my first video that did really well when I got into content creation, so I do have a soft spot for it. Plus, it's a great game and all that stuff, but I'm also going to get my uh, butt stomped today, so I may like it less after this particular uh, scenario over here. This is Marvel United Multiverse Solo. We're going to be playing against Immortus over here. We're going to be playing against Immortus against the scenario over here. We're going to be playing as a single hero, as Cosmic Ghost Rider, and we're going to be diving into a one-to-one -one challenge against them. As far as how the solo mode works, I'm going to be covering a few things. Timestamps down below in case you want to jump into the gameplay. But I'll be covering how the solo mode works. I'll be covering what Immortus does because he is messed up and going through all of that. So, solo mode in Marvel United Multiverse, the new solo mode they've been working on, which I believe to some extent might be backwards compatible, although you might need some of the uh, solo mode cards to help you out, but effectively, you are controlling a single hero. Again, Cosmic Ghost Rider is going to be the single hero I'm controlling. I have a single deck of 12 cards, or 11 cards, because I don't have his double wild. I need to remove his double wild. I actually didn't realize that I have his double wild over there, so we're going to remove that. Uh, but we're going to be controlling our, our single character, and then we're going to have a separate deck of our, our additional heroes that are helping us. They're not called additional heroes. They're called something else. They're supporting heroes. Supporting heroes. We're going to have a deck of cards from four supporting heroes. What you do is you pick three special cards from four four supporting heroes and you add those into a mixed up shuffle deck that you will then have two cards available on the table at any given point and on your turn you will either be taking a hero turn where you draw a card and use your hero as you would expect or you take a supporting heroes card turn where you play a supporting heroes turn into the storyline into the the card line the timeline all of that stuff when you add a supporting hero into the game when you add one of their cards to the game you anything that references that supporting hero instead references your own hero they are after all supporting your hero Hero. In addition to that, in Marvel United Multiverse, we're going to be playing against Immortus, a new villain. We're going to be playing with these six locations. The threat cards are obviously Cosmic Ghost Rider, a new hero slash villain character. We're going to have the specific equipment cards. That's going to be a new thing in Marvel United Multiverse, where you have specific equipment cards you can use, but you do get rid of your uh, double wild to compensate for that. Additionally, you're going to have cards that you use in the solo game, where you can spend between zero to three points depending on difficulty scaling and i think i need all three points on this deck of additional cards over here these battle plan cards you can use to uh, help you out in the game and i need all of those battle plan cards because we are going to get stomped by immortus and that's basically how the uh the gameplay works for the most part some small nuanced details things like your hero has to go after a uh, uh master plan card so you have to be the first one to go because you are the leading hero and some small details like that we'll dive into it Hopefully I get the rules right. I did uh, go over them first, uh, but I also make mistakes. So there is that. Let me know down below what I screwed up on, because I guarantee I'll screw up things. But I do know that you activate all the BAM cards when the villain BAMs. As far as that, let's go ahead and read what Immortus does, because Immortus is messed up. Special rules. Heroes cannot damage Immortus. You don't kill Immortus. You don't. You don't kill Immortus ever. But you do win if you complete all three mission cards. So when you complete your third mission card, you win. Ta-da! But instead, Immortus is trying to make it harder for you to complete those mission cards because the overflow rules are whenever they can't be added to a card, instead draw a master plan card and add it face down to the storyline. So making the storyline a little more complicated as you, can, as you have overflow not complicated, filling it up and uh, slowly having a lose condition as you run out of these cards. But then additionally, the BAM effect is the BAM effect is to discard a civilian and a henchman from Immortus' location, and for each token discarded, remove a token from the corresponding mission if still not completed. So basically, he makes it harder for you to complete those missions as he slowly discards people from his location. Although he does clear the location, so there is that nice little effect. But then from there, his threat cards are messed up difficult. I'm not going to go over every single one. I'll do them as they happen because they will be happening soon enough. But effectively, they mostly deal damage to us in different locations and then a variety of other negative effects. 
And then we have Tachyon Field Generator. As long as this threat is in play, heroes cannot place the last token on the corresponding mission. They must discard it instead. So we definitely need to take this out. This is an essential. You must do this in order to win. Although I guess since you have to finish this, the mission, you have to get all of these things in order to win. So um, it's messed up. We're going to die. As far as our assistance cards, we have a few things going on. We have Quick Reactions. This is going to be our first battle plan card that we have. Quick Reaction is each supporting hero card with no movement at the bottom. Gives you a movement action when you play in the storyline. So that helps you. You also have Calling for Help over here. When you play a supporting hero card at any time during your turn, you may automatically rescue one civilian in your location. So we'll have the opportunity to automatically rescue a civilian whenever we play a supporting hero card. Then we have our equipment, Hell Cycle. You can use it on your turn at which point you'll flip it face down and then you turn it you get an extra movement and then we have hellfire chain use on your turn to be able to damage against up to two different targets in your location and then turn this face down so that's a lot that's what we got going on and now we're going to start off with immortus's starting plan card so right about now those of you who jumped here Hello, welcome aboard. We're about to lose badly to Immortus. We're going to start with the starting master plan card, which is going to have Immortus moving three, going one, two, three, exactly to where I am, which uh, seems to be intentional since that is a starting card. And you're going to discard all tokens from his location. That's going to be Infinity Watch Assemble, discard all tokens. They're going to be discarded. Now, because there are no tokens on these, they doesn't actually matter yet, but he is going to add civilians to both adjacent locations. So, Two civilians in each adjacent location. That is his starting master plan card, which effectively means I have to move on this first turn. And we'll be uh, playing the cards, by the way, over here, just for our camera visibility. We won't have an actual magical cool timeline. They are very cool looking, but we're gonna start playing them over here just so we can track those. And with that, we have our hero turn. It's time to figure out what we wanna do. I'm so in trouble. So, where do we have? I could play that. That's not terrible. Cosmic Hellfire is not terrible. It's not the worst. Um, but we'll need a whole bunch of stars very, very quickly. I think we'll start with Cosmic Hellfire. It just seems like decent. I don't know how often we'll have a better opportunity. So Cosmic Ghost Rider is going to play Cosmic Hellfire, where you go ahead and move one to this location and then discard all henchmen at the location. Okay, that's going to be a special ability over there. They're going to go on to this card, which is great. We're doing totally great, 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 great. Although, heroes starting the turn here must ignore an action symbol at the bottom of their that's not good. Although that's their turn. Interesting. So my assumption, hero starting their turn must ignore one action symbol at the bottom of hero cards this turn. Ooh, that is interesting. I think it still counts. You see, that warding over here on Niflheim, hero starting their turn here must ignore an action symbol. I do wonder how that plays out with the supporting heroes. Do the supporting heroes count as a non-hero turn? Technically speaking, it is not a hero turn. Whew. This goes back to the technicalities, but I don't actually know the rules for that. But it is what it is. I'm going to... I think I'm going to vote that supporting heroes don't have that limitation. I think that just makes sense, given the way the normal hero structure works. So I'm going to vote that supporting heroes don't have limitation. I might be wrong about it. I think I'm going to get stomped either way. So it is what it is. We're going to make a judgment call. And heroic turn... Oh, and I forgot to draw a card, because I, I forgot to do that. We have a regular fight card over there. Okay. So with that said, I think we're going to go ahead and do a supporting hero's turn. So we have Lab Genius or Talon and Fangs. In this case, on a supporting hero's turn, you do not draw a card. And Lab Genius gives a token to another hero, then they draw until they have three cards in hand. I don't know if that's that helpful. The problem is neither is Talon and Fangs, given the fact that we just don't have that. So I think we're going to go ahead and use Shuri Black Panther, even though she's not that helpful at the moment. That does give me a double movement as well as a... Um, oh, I could, double movement and fight's actually not the worst. That's actually not the worst. Because I kind of want to take out... I kind of want to take out uh, Captain Marvel, but I don't know if I'm ready to yet. I could try to take out Silver Surfer, or I could try to take out... Uh, I could try to take out Yondu. Okay, let's go ahead and play Talon and Fangs for a double movement. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Okay, ready? So we're doing a double movement. One, two. We're going to go ahead and take out these two, or do I take out Yondu? I need to take out Yondu. I'm going to take out Yondu over here. Uh, we're going to do that, uh, start that damage process over here. So Yondu is taking two damage. And then we are going to, that was a double movement. And then we are also, when you play a supporting hero card, at any time during the turn, you may automatically rescue a civilian. So I will go ahead and do so. That's going to clear up a little bit of time over there. And then we're going to draw another card as a replacement. And we have Spider-Man 2099. As long as this card is face up in the storyline, if there are no symbols at the bottom of the two latest hero cards, you may perform one free symbol on your turn. 
Now, that's not bad to get in play nice and early. And combined with quick reactions means I can actually have double movement even with no symbols in play. Um, I think I'm also, just as a heads up, before things happen, I'm going to use, actually I can do it right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play Spider-Man 2099. And we're going to play that into the storyline, which is going to give us a movement and a wild. And additionally, whenever there's not movement at the bottom of two cards, we'll have that opportunity. I think I will use my wild to deal one damage to Yondu, killing Yondu, taking him out of play because we need to take these people out of play ASAP as soon as we possibly can. Yondu is gone. We're going to go ahead and... Ooh, that's a problem. Oh, we got a movement. But I don't want the star token. Hmm. Okay. I can work with that. We're going to go ahead and co complete this over here. We are going to use our movement. I'm a little worried about the BAM over here. I think I'm going to go ahead and I will move my one movement to a Nihilus over here. I think that is worth it. Must get, cancel the Christ token once some of the bottom of the latest card. That can be a problem, but we'll figure it out. I'm just going to move to uh, Project Pegasus to try to start taking out a Nihilus over here. We'll figure it out. That's going to be my one movement. I still have my Hellfire Chain if I so wanted to use it, but I do not think I will because of the nature of how Annihilus over here works, and we are done. That is going to be our turn. We're going to take a Master Plan turn. Hopefully it does not have a BAM. It has a BAM. So we're going to move over here. I'm going to have our first BAM. Did we have a BAM in our first turn? We did not. Okay, no BAM in our first turn. We're going to go ahead and do Influencing Events. Each hero swaps their earliest and latest face-up... Each hero swaps their earliest and latest face-up hero cards in the storyline. Okay. So I don't know if that significantly matters. We're going to swap these around over here. It's, it slightly messes up my ability to get a wild over there. It's not crazy, though. And he's moving zero and bamming, which is not the worst, actually, because when he moves zero, he's going to do his own bam effect. Discard one and one from Mortis' location, which will have no effect because there is nothing there. So that works out nicely. No, Immortus. Why did I move him one? He should be over here. I moved him one for some reason. He should be over here. Then... We're going to activate all BAM effects, so we're going to go ahead and start with the Nihilus. Each hero in this and adjacent locations must cancel with a Crisis token one symbol. So that symbol does not exist, which actually means we'll get it right back because of the nature of uh, that face-up card over there. Then Nihilus ignores one damage, that we can ignore that. BAM, deal one damage to this and both adjacent locations. Nope, not relevant. BAM, deal two damage to one hero in each adjacent location. Not relevant. BAM, move Silver Surfer, Surfer clockwise to the next location with any heroes and no threat, if possible. There is no location with any heroes and no threat, so that I would assume does not happen. Then deal two damage to one hero in this location, but I assume it will not operate because of the fact that we are, well, not in a location with no threat. So, that represents the uh, villain's turn. Oh, we also have to put things out because we have to do that, which means we will have overflow. Let's deal with that. So, we're going to be putting two villains over here, two henchmen. We're going to be putting one over here, and then draw a master plan card and add it face down to the storyline, which is not great because I think it means we're going to run out of time sooner rather than later. So, things could be worse. Things could be better. It is our turn, and because the master plan went, we have to go ahead and draw a card. So, we will do that. We're going to draw a card. We have a bunch of these, like, single... This whole single action thing is not great. Defeat one in your in your and both adjacent locations. I don't have that opportunity right now. So we're not going to do that. I think we'll play a wild, which I guess helps, but not enough. Not enough. I don't like that. I want to take out a Nihilus over here, but I don't think I can. Now, we do generate a free movement symbol, I believe. A free movement because of that card over there. No, that card over here, the bottom one. This is the problem with doing a not a storyline. If there's no movements in the two latest cards, you may perform a free movement. So I basically get a free movement as long as there's no movement in the two latest cards. And I have to take my turn. Uh, did I go ahead and rescue a civilian when I played a supporting hero cards? In fact, I don't think, for the record, I don't believe I played two supporting heroes. Last turn I played a supporting hero card, I moved back here. So this is just for the record, this would have had played out. So last turn, this should not be here because I would have rescued a civilian, which would then have been added now. And that means there's going to be a civilian over here because of, what's it called, calling for help. So that would have happened, so we would not actually have lo that lost time. You can check the math, I'm pretty sure it works. With that said, we still have to deal with stuff. So let's go ahead and deal with stuff. I just, I'm not feeling confident here. We have a free movement, and we have a wild. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and move. We're going to play a wild, and we'll take our free movement. So there's a wild over here now. 
and we'll take our free movement to move over here, and we'll use our while to place a star down here because we do have to get rid of Tachyon Field Generator sooner rather than later. That's gonna be our turn. Our turn is done. I don't think we're gonna use Hellfire Chains right now, and we're not gonna use Hell Cycle either because we have plenty of movement in play. So with that, with that noted, we'll go ahead and draw another card, although this time we should have a card face up over here. Inspiring Leadership, we're definitely playing Captain Carter. So Captain Carter is going to do a few things. Because it's a supporting hero card, we will have the opportunity to go ahead and place one of these over here because of calling for help. And then additionally, we gain one token from the pool to another hero, then they draw a card. Again, so all effects and supporting hero cards affect you, so I'm going to gain a token from the pool, and then I'm going to draw a card, which does help give me some health, which is going to be important because of the damage I'm taking. Although my cards are all the single symbol cards, can I please get some useful cards here? They're all shuffled to the bottom. Do I have the right amount of cards over here? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I guess I do. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and we're going to have to deal with some things here. So we played Captain Carter. We now have a double wild. So we do have a free movement because of that card. So we have a movement, a wild, and a star. I'm going to use my this and this on this over here. So we're going to clear this off over here. Then I'm going to go ahead and place this over here, which means we're going to completely clear that off. That's going to be the attack and field generator is now out of play. We can put our tokens back in the token pool. And end of turn, I can gain a punch token. So we're going to do that. And then we'll go ahead and, hmm, we're going to go ahead and place that symbol down over here. And hero starting the turn, I must ignore one action as well at the bottom of hero cards this turn. I think, hmm, yeah, I'm still not sure if we should or shouldn't have done that. I'm not certain how that works. We'll figure it out. Anyways. From there, that is our turn. We've done our turn. We took our token. They drew a card. We are good to go, I think. Okay, we're fine. We're going to go ahead and draw a new card for the new supporting hero card. It's Captain Carter again with Shield Throw. Uh, do damage in an adjacent location or recharge your Captain Carter's shield to kill at the end of your turn. Now, so this is an interesting idea over here. I don't know if that would let me recharge my own equipment or not. We're not going to. We're just going to do the damage in an adjacent location if we so choose to do that. From there, we also played each supporting hero card. Oh, my turn's not actually done, by the way, because... I should have two movement, one from this card and one from Quick Reactions. Each supporting hero card with no movement gives you a free movement. So we should have actually two free movement right now, even though we have no movement there, which I'm not averse to using, because I'll use that to get out of this location and start damaging others elsewhere. I can get a star token over here. I don't mind the fight token, but I think I'm going to go ahead and start with the process of trying to kill Captain Marvel, because next turn, do I have what I need? I don't think I do. I don't think I have what I need. I think I'm going to go ahead and head to Captain Marvel and hope for the best because uh, she has four. She's going to hurt me with a bam. I just know it. <clears throat> but I'm going to go ahead and go at one, two. We'll head over here to Captain Marvel. We're going to try to take her out as soon as possible to try to uh, kill her. We'll see how well that works for us. That was our turn. We now have another turn, which could be a supporting hero turn. Give one, then they draw until they have three cards. Damage in adjacent location. None of those really help me. We're definitely in trouble. Uh, let's go ahead and draw a card. Let's do it. Are we doing a, a hero turn? I don't want to. I don't want to do a hero turn. I want to do a supporting hero turn. Damage in an adjacent location. Uh, if hero deals more, more than one damage to Captain Marvel during the turn, that hero takes one damage. I could do Captain Carter with shield throw. But I really don't want to. Okay. Let's go ahead and play Captain Carter. We're going to go ahead and play her. She generates a movement, which means we're going to have movement in the storyline, which does not help us. We are going to move over here. We're going to damage Captain Marvel, so she only takes one damage this time. Uh, then we are going to rescue this civilian over here to hopefully make it so that, you know, you know, uh, Mortis over here does not generate more. And I think that's all we get to do. It's kind of a lame turn, but I think I am okay with it. I could also use Hellfire Chain. How does Hellfire Chain recharge? At the beginning of your turn, discard one card and one token to turn this face up. That's not the best. It's not the best at all. But I could use it against... Feels more than one damage, Captain Marvel. I don't know. We'll see. We'll figure it out. It's going to be a villain turn right now, so we're going to figure out just how bad this is. So, we're going to draw a new card for our replacement over here. We're going to go ahead and draw a card from Immortus, and Immortus is going to bam, like you'd expect. One, two, three, four over here. We're going to place down two villains. Looks like he likes to place into adjacent locations. So that is good to know. We're going to place... Oh, actually, that should be the other way around. These are going to be like this. And then we're going to go ahead and have these over here. Am I doing this right? Yeah, I think I'm doing this right. Yeah, okay. Um, so we're going to place these guys over here. 
face up like so and then Immortus, each hero swaps their earliest and latest cards face up in the storyline. That's really helpful, actually. I do want that wild. Okay. Okay, that's Immortus over here. Now, again, I don't even know how this works with supporting heroes. It doesn't include all the cards. There are some questions I have in the solo mode, some small details and nuances. Don't know exactly. But that said, let's go ahead and do all the bad things because the bad things have to happen. So in Immortus' location, we're going to discard this, which means we also discard one from over here. That's going to be done over there. Uh, we are also going to activate all bound locations. Silver Surfer is going to move to any location that has no threat in the hero. That's not true. We're going to go to BAM. Each hero in this and adjacent locations, not relevant. We're going to go ahead and deal uh, Star Fox. Deal one damage to one hero in this and both adjacent locations. Star Fox is going to lose Cosmic Ghost Rider. is going to go underneath the deck. Then we're going to have... Uh, we're going to go ahead and have uh, Captain Marvel deal two damage to one hero in each adjacent to one hero in each adjacent location. Ah, that is nauseating. That is nauseating. Okay, well we're just gonna go ahead and do it. Uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of Cosmic Ghost Rider over here and Cosmic Ghost Rider over here. Good thing we have that extra health over here because that is uh, very helpful to not die. And then from there, uh, that's gonna be done over there, and then we go to that's it. That's it. We're done. Now it's our turn. We can uh, take our turn, and we must take our turn, so we're going to draw a card. We have a movement and a wild over there, which we're not going to play. We're going to play Cosmic Villain Punishment to generate both a fight, defeat one in your and both adjacent locations, so we're going to defeat one, two, and three. So we cleared up a little bit of the board over there. Helped us out, but not enough because of the way Immortus likes to put two tokens down everywhere, like a jerk. Uh, then we'll go ahead and we have one damage we can deal, as well as one wild. I could try to take down Star Fox over here with two, which is not the craziest. Up to two different targets in your location. Hmm. Now, do I have a free movement? I do have a free movement because there is no movement on these symbols. So again, not the craziest either. So I think I'm going to go ahead. I, I might regret this. I'm using all this free movement here, but I think it's the right way to go. Because Captain Marvel, I don't love. And I think I could take her out. I think I could take her out. I could do one, two, three damage, but then I would die. I don't want to die. That's not the best. So we won't die. We'll try not to die. Uh, we are going to go ahead and deal two damage against Star Fox over here. And that's going to be two damage. Star Fox is mostly dead. Then we're going to use our free movement to pop over here. And we're going to use our Hellfire Chain to deal two damage against two different targets in your location. Then turn this face down. So we're going to deal one damage to this, sort of this henchman over here. And one damage to Captain Marvel. Because it's only one damage, I will not take any damage from her. So I'm good to go over there. And that's going to be my turn. Uh, now we're going to take a supporting hero's turn. We still haven't defeated enough things that we're under pressure yet. So Immortus is still operating every three turns. So that part's great. That part's golden. Uh, we will go ahead and... Hmm. We want to take a supporting hero's turn, almost certainly. But we have the fight from before. So we could do Accelerated Vision, reveal the top card of the Master Plan deck. That's often more helpful, usually. Although Shuri right now is helpful. Shuri is going to help us. Yeah, I'd rather use this for our... Oh no, that's actually this is actually not a bad time to use it. Let's use Accelerated Vision. That will give us a... So reveal the top card of the Master Plan deck. So we're going to do that. So we'll reveal the Master Plan. That's going to be a move zero. Oh, I love it. Each hero takes back all the face-up hero cards in the storyline and shuffles them into the bottom of the... Wait, what? Messing with the timeline, each hero takes back all of their face-up hero cards in the storyline and shuffles them into the bottom of their deck. I don't understand. Isn't that giving us more life? Is that essential? I guess that's essential because otherwise we'll just die. That might be essential. Okay. I don't know how this works with the supporting hero cards. Again, I just... I imagine it pulls back the entire timeline because that's what it would do in a regular game. So I am going to pull back the entire timeline, but I'm making some house calls as far as supporting hero cards and how this works. But it's good to know he's going to be there. That's all fine. So we're going to go ahead and take our turn. We have a star effect, which we'll use to rescue this civilian over here. Not a star effect, a, um, a heroic action. We have a fight effect, and we do have a movement should we choose to use it. So I could take out Star Fox over here. I could take out Star Fox, which is not necessarily a bad thing, or I could do one more damage to Captain Marvel and negate my movement, because who cares? I am almost inclined to do that. I am inclined to do that. I will take out Captain Marvel with a single hit over here. If possible, then deal two damage to one hero in this location. Oh, she is a problem. Okay, you know what? I'm going to use my free movement to move to Star Fox after the, at the end of the day. So I'm going to move to Star Fox over here. I'm going to take out Star Fox. I'm going to kill him. He's gone. We've now put a third token down over here, and we've revealed 
If there's at least one other hero in this location, you may gain one, one, or one. That does not seem fair in a solo game. That doesn't seem fair in a solo game. Don't know how you want to handle that, but we'll figure it out. Whatever. Anyways, so, we've done with that. We've taken our turn. It's time for another turn. Let's go ahead and reveal what Loki has in store for us. Loki has, about uh, that was a supporting hero card with no movement, so I technically have more movement if I want it. But I think, yeah, I think I'll use my extra movement to wander over here. Because it's not a bad thing. Because then, at the end of my turn, I can gain a star token, which I'll definitely use. So we're going to gain a star token, because we have an extra movement from our uh, calling for help and quick reactions. Gives us two movement, effectively. Uh, not calling for help. Quick reactions and the other one in the timeline, which we're about to get back shortly. And then I have one more action. I started my turn with, uh, with three or more cards. Must ignore the draw step. I do not have three or more cards, because I'm wounded like anything, so we could ignore that. Loki is a star or recharge your scepter equipment. Again, same question. I'll just treat it as a star. And then gain a punch, which is not bad. Or I could do Shuri Black Panther to make sure I stay alive. But I know I'm staying alive. If I use the Loki Scepter, I will have the opportunity to guarantee that I stay alive, which I am fine with. I like staying alive. Uh, 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 staying alive. So here's what we're going to do. Ready? I am going to go ahead and I will use my star to go ahead and rescue someone. That will keep things a little safer. Then... I am going to go ahead and play this card into the storyline. And this card, whenever you play a supporting card into your storyline, you may automatically rescue one in your location. So I'm going to go ahead and play this, and I'm going to rescue... Hmm, I'm going to keep my star. So I'm going to rescue one in the location, which I just did with that. Then I'm going to use this star over here from Loki to rescue another one in my location. Then I'm going to use the two movement I have, one from Quick Reactions and one from the other one in the storyline, to move one, two. And then I'm going to hit Captain Marvel in the face for one damage to slowly start the process of taking her out. Now, I probably have missed a few calling for help options, but it is what it is. I think I've forgotten a few times. Whatever. With that, we're going to go ahead and activate Immortus, and Immortus is going to do nothing to me because I'm on top of his game. So, Immortus is going to play a card. He's going to go zero. Oh, boy. This is where I probably should have remembered. This is where I probably should have remembered. I don't want to play a card face down to the storyline. How many cards do we have over here? We have one, two, three, four. I might be able to afford this. I'm not going to retcon this. I forgot that this is going to overflow. So it is what it is. It's going to overflow. We're going to go ahead and have Immortus go. He's going to discard people here, which won't affect this timeline because there's no one there. He's going to go ahead and place tokens down. So we're going to place two over here, which can't go. So we're going to place one face down in the storyline. We're also going to place two civilians over here. So we're going to have two civilians going in this location here. And then all heroes are going to take their card back from the storyline, which is not the bestest, but also not the worstest, I think. Let's go ahead and take these cards back and shuffle them into their respective decks. Shuffle them to the bottom of their respective decks. Completely changing the storyline as we have it. So we're going to slowly play this here. Again, hopefully I'm playing this correctly based on the way that card... Uh, again, uh, supporting heroes. I got nothing. I got nothing. We're going to take our Ghost Rider cards back, shuffle them up, shuffle them to the bottom. I'm going to take these cards back and shuffle them to the bottom of, well, the uh, supporting heroes deck. Okay. I think we're doing fine. I think we got this. Lots of control over here. Lots of things to do. We should play the new Loki card. We'll do that in a second. Let me just shuffle up these Ghost Rider cards. And then we'll move to the next card. Now, we haven't completed any missions yet. We're still totally, totally golden, he says to himself, wondering if they're totally, totally golden. And I kind of don't want to complete missions yet because I might have to. I might just have to. It might just be time. It might be time. I don't like it. All right. Let's go ahead and reveal the Loki card. Loki card is going to be Loki. Until the beginning of your next turn, when you take damage, you may redirect it to another hero or henchman in any location. That's pretty cool. I don't think it's the right time to play it yet, though. Maybe soon. Maybe soon. Okay. Let's start by drawing a card, because we have to, because it is our turn. Remote Possession. At the end of this turn, you can instead use the end of a turn effect of any single location with no threat, as if you were there. That's useful. I don't mind that. I don't mind getting some tokens over here. So, we will go ahead and play Cosmic Ghost Rider into the timeline, I think, because I don't think we want to move. I think we're just going to start the under pressure part of this. We're going to kill Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel is now dead. That's going to activate the timeline aspect of having bad things happen to us. So we're going to place this over here. We have the effect of you may draw one card if you have one or two cards in your hand or discard a card to gain a token. I have one or two cards in my hand, so I will happily draw a card. Thank you very much. So I think I'm going to go ahead and draw a card because because the rules say so but let me just see before end of turn effects do i want to use this to rescue a civilian given the fact that i'm trying to make things happen 
Yeah, let's go ahead and... Yes, we're going to use this card to rescue a civilian. Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay, so we're going to use this, rescue a civilian. We now have things slowly moving along. We... I, I, it looks pretty decent. It looks like I have a chance. Let's actually see if I have a chance before we finish this. Let's just let's just, let's just play it out. Let's play it out. So, we're going to draw a card because rule said so. Then we're going to go ahead and take an effect. All right, I think that I'm going to use Loki's card. I think I think I have this down. I think. We'll see. Because I'm pretty sure Silver Server is going to try to destroy me. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> but in the meantime, first of all, we have to go ahead and take that uh, punch token using Cosmic's Ghost Rider's effect. That's important. That's going to be possibly essential to actually uh, complete this over here. From there, do I have a chance? Do I have a chance? I think I have a chance. Let's find out. Anyways, uh, from there, we're going to go ahead and have Loki take a turn. Is that what we're doing right now? I think so. Yeah. So right about now, right about now, we're going to go ahead and have Loki take a turn. We're going to play Loki's card. Loki is going to prevent me from taking damage until the beginning of your next turn. When you take damage, you may be redirected to another hero or henchman in any location. That is helpful because then we have the wild and we have the punch so far. So we have a wild and punch from his card because of calling for help. We get to rescue a civilian in our current location. And because of the, oh, that car's not there anymore. We don't have the free movement. We don't have the free movement. We don't have the free double movement anymore. I'm going to use Hell Cycle. So quick reactions will give us the uh, movement. And then Hell Cycle will give us a second movement. So we're going to use two movement to go one, two to this location. That's going to be two movement to this location. And then we still have the wild and the punch that we can utilize. And I think I'm going to use the punch. No, one second. We'll have to use the wild on this, which is going to complete this. And then we're going to use the punch on this, which is going to complete this. Well, not complete this. Okay, we are mostly done. I think we're not done yet. Because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure at the moment, and these are, these are both completed. So this can slide along over here. And now we're going to go ahead and have... No, 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 no. Now we need our punch. We need our punch. We're done. We're done. We did it. That's it. I think. I'm pretty sure. Did we just do it? Okay. I was, I was intending to take damage and, ha and redirect that. I don't think I need to. I could be mistaken over here, but I'm pretty sure I just took out Immortus, possibly with some small degrees of cheating because of the nature of um, solo rules and possibly with things missed. It is possible I missed something here or there. I don't know. But I believe Immortus is dead. This is the part where I go, ta-da, and Immortus falls to his death as Ghostfire stands over his body looking down into him and looking into his soul and asking him who hurt him as a child. I think that's it. I think that is a, a Immortus. That's going to be a solo play of Immortus. Overall, so so this is first impressions over here. I only just played the solo mode for the first time ever. Uh, first impressions are, uh, well, multiple things. First of all, Immortus is a jerk face, just in general. I am somewhat surprised that I won. I expected to, to lose horribly. I think I got lucky with a bunch of cards. We had multiple cards that had him use a zero turn action when there was no one in his location, which really does help me out. And I think that's very much a timing thing, although it might depend on his cards. His cards look like they always add... Oh, so Space Van, space Immortus over here adds to the same location he's in. Many of his cards add to adjacent locations, which means almost inherently any zero action is going to give us a small reprieve. So that's good to know. Past that, depending on how these BAMs activate, we were able to control it a bit, and the nature of us being a solo hero against a bunch of BAMs that activate against all the heroes did mean we had a higher chance of being able to control our safety. So there is that factor. But that's obviously going to be a case-by-case -case situation. Playing the solo mode, which has different aspects to it, against different scenarios, will or different bosses, different villains, and all that, will have different ways that things play out either for or against you. That's just uh, by the very nature of it. Uh, past that, these cards over here, the battle plan cards I like a lot, especially the variety of them. We have a whole bunch of these battle plan cards you can utilize, and the variety of them does give you different ways to try to uh, play into the game with different play styles or complement your heroes in different ways. I like them. Obviously, it's a balancing thing, so if you find that it's too easy against any particular scenario, you could use fewer battle plan cards. I kind of like having battle plan cards, so I kind of would be inclined to use them and just see how things play out. And then, we, of course, we have our equipment. We used each of those one time. Overall, this worked well. Overall, I enjoyed the puzzle of trying to figure out how to defeat Immortus, especially considering how difficult he did seem to be. And uh, Silver Surface left alive, Annihilus is left alive, but everything worked out well. 
In any case, that is basically it. That is a solo play of Marvel United Multiverse. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what I missed down below. I'm sure I missed something. I'm sure I didn't take something or did take something. Things for or against me as we played. And again, small. Oh, the one thing I would say negative about the solo mode uh, is that it definitely introduces questions that I don't know how many questions as you play against different villains as you play different scenarios I don't know how many questions would arise through the nature of the changing of the rules Those are things you have to either be comfortable house ruling or alternatively have a bunch of you know Predefined rules that kind of handle all situations I'm kind of diving into this with a generic just a here's how it works without a whole exhausting catalog of all the exceptions And that does mean uh, house rules to a degree and prototype Everything you see here is prototype, rules, components, rules especially, components and all those things subject to change. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Uh, this is basically it. Uh, I'll have a review. I'll have a review of Marvel United Multiverse. It will include thoughts about the solo mode. You can check that out as well. But in any case, and until next time, I hope you have a good one.